outside the power of this government. Yeah. However, I do trust the sea captain. I do not, in any way, shape or form, trust the head of a foreign power, particularly the head of the American uh, foreign nation. Yeah. Yeah, but... And he does have the physical ability to launch that attack, yeah. just like the sea captain does. Yeah. but basically, my point that I'm trying to put over is where, you know, you were sort of like making the lad out to say that he was wrong. In a way, he was like, we should be independent, but don't forget, we have the final say of what is fired from this country. No, we don't, you see, David. We should have. Now, that is the point that we're debating, I think. You, like the sea captain, you believe... Well, let us keep the two together, because they do run hand in hand, or parallel at least. The sea captain has the physical power to fire that weapon without resort to Whitehall. Does yeah. he not? Yes. But you and me both believe that he wouldn't use it. Not until a war had broken out. If a war had broken out, then he's got his orders and he knows what his target is and whap, off it goes to whatever town in yeah. Russia or wherever he's meant to obliterate. Yeah. All right. He's got his orders, but he also has the power to act outside those orders so that we don't have our nuclear weapons lying under the ice cap yeah. having been hit by another one. We're aware of that. We accept that. We yeah. don't believe either of us or many people listening to this program, but that sea captain would maliciously start a war and put Britain in danger. Yeah. The issue I want you to consider, the parallel issue, is that the identical set of circumstances exists for the President of the United States. The President of the United States has the physical power to fire a weapon, a cruise missile as it happens, from our shores without reference to Whitehall, just like the sea captain. What we have to consider, and I suppose it eventually comes down to an emotional decision, is do we believe the American president would never consider firing that weapon without resort to Whitehall? Now let us look at the two roles of the individuals concerned. The captain of the submarine, his role is to protect Britain. So he's unlikely to fire a weapon maliciously because he would not be satisfying his role. The job of the American president is first and foremost, and, and should be, to protect America. Now, if writing off Britain protects America, then he'll write it off, just like he wrote off Vietnam, like he wrote off Cambodia, like his ju they have just the nation, and the American nation have just written off a country. So they will write off other countries, and I don't think we are protected from that. Yeah. You know, I also think that, you know, not, well, semi-Eastern Bloc countries like, well, how can you put it, like Poland, I don't think they would come under the, you know, the Russian influence of saying, well, the Americans are getting out of hand, they're you now advancing forward, let's block them one. That may or may not be the case, but we do not escape from the fact that America could and might take Britain into a nuclear war, and that would cost us dearly. Now, just to give you one piece of information that you may not be aware of, and I may not be here on Monday for giving you this information, because it's a breach of the Official Secrets Act, and to blazes with it, but we actually intercept American signals. We have intercept stations, and we intercept American signals, because we don't trust them either. Now, well, that's what Cheltenham is now, you know... As you that isn't what Cheltenham is, but well, the information Cheltenham, surely ends Cheltenham, up there is one day. It is a central headquarters, but yeah, they well, don't actually do the intercept. Indeed, but they don't. But they don't do the intercept. But they don't do the intercept. But you know, so I the intercept is done elsewhere. You know, well, okay. Right, Thank you very much, David. How right. do Sean after the break? Hello, I'm Graham Earnshaw from Earnshaw Sweet Centres. We are keen to maintain our volume sales record by offering you the largest selection of three-piece sweets in the area. We have the lowest prices. We also offer you £100 party exchange regardless of condition. Free delivery, interest-free credit over ten months, with instant delivery from stock. This is a fabulous opportunity for you to buy. Buy now and pay later. Visit our showroom, Arndale Centre, Morecambe, Stockbeck Mill, Kendall, Burrogate, Penrith, or call and see me at our main warehouse, Vickers Estate, Morecambe. Come along, come along to the centre. Next to Power City and Decorate in Preston. It's the only place to go. Hello, Sean. Hello. Yep. Yeah. Um, about Simon Weston, you said he wasn't here, all right? Who? 
Um, Western, wasn't it? Yes, uh, we've got an awful line. Carry on. Zero seven. Yes, I said that Simon Weston wasn't a hero. Yeah, well, I don't agree. Why not? Because, in my opinion, someone who's a hero is to put their own life before to save someone else's life. Go on. That, that is what a hero is, isn't it? Carry on. And what he done was he put his own life at risk by trying to get other people off the boat when it was on fire. That's why his hands I still do not accept you as a hero. Why? Because he was only there. What? Seems you have a pa an appalling line too. I said because he was only there. But if you're not going to hear it, there's not no. much point us carrying on. Hello, Stephanie. Hello, Alan. It's my dad's birthday tomorrow, and I've absolutely. We don't do dedications. Hello, Lee. Hello, Alan. Yes. Um, in January, I bought a C5 from a small shop and they bought it off another man who was a wholesaler and he'd bought 4,000. And my friend bought what, a C5 from Comet. And End of story. Goodbye. We don't name shops or traders on this programme. Hello, Joy. Hello, George. <laughs> Thank you very much, George. Hello, Patrick. Hello. Hello. Yes. Oh, um, there's uh, some uh, old ladies' flats uh, behind, my, um, behind my house. And um, they've been doing the, uh, some, some kind of uh, insulation on them, uh, and all this, like, loft insulation stuff's blown into the back garden. Your back garden? Yeah. Over the fence, sort of thing, and it's all over the garden. We're fine. Hey. Okay. What do you want me to do? Well, I don't know. What am I supposed to do? Well, I'll try picking it up. I'll do Gary. All right, Tom. Yes? I'd just like to say that Scousers one day will view the world. I'm sure they will. There's a rumour has it that they do already. <laughs> Cheers. How do you, Dennis? Hello, oh, Alan. It's me again. Dennis the Onion. Oh, yes. You, you still smell. How do you, Andy? Hello, Alan. Yes. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about me uh, job. What do you do? Well, I'm a manual worker in uh, Accrington. And uh, what it is, I finish in... Uh, two week, because I'm working on CPU, and, uh, CPU? Aye. Community Programme Scheme? Yeah. What's the proper name? What's the U for? Unit. Unit. Ah, yeah, go on then. Well, uh, what it is, I've learnt a few bits and bats, like building and not and pointing, and I was just wondering, but, uh, is it illegal for me to go around knocking on doors and asking if the, uh, front houses need pointing out, you know? Asking if you want it pointing. <laughs> I've got to... I mean, is it legal? I've got to give you an honest answer, Andy, and say yes, it is. I it's wish legal, it... is it? I wish it wasn't, but it is. You know, like, if it, you know, it's a fair price and a fair job. Well, the answer to your question is yes, it is legal. I mean, there are lots of other questions that you need to ask, like, do I need to register for income tax and all the rest of it, and of course you do, but yes, it is legal. I wish it wasn't. I know, I know what I go about, I mean, I've been... Well, the, the um, doors usually have a little knocker on, and you just pick that up and bang it against the door a couple of times. It's fairly easy. How do... Would you have a man point your house that doesn't know how to work a door knocker? Hello, Nick. All right, Colin. Yes. Double, double. Thank you, Nick. How do Paul? Paul's gone home, and who can blame him with this rubbish on the wireless? Hello, Craig. Greg. All right, Greg. All right, Alan, well, a couple of days ago, I had a teacher at school, I won't, I won't give his name, or a school. Can I not say the school? No. Right, well, he's got a bite, and um, a certain few members of this school let down his tyres and pissed off with the, the rubber thing, and uh, the, the, you know, the inflator thing. And I found that in my bag when I got home. And uh, he had to go for a taxi. And I, I, I handed this, this uh, plastic thing into him this morning, and they thought it was me, so he's charging me for the taxi. Can he do this? Well, tell him it wasn't you. Well, he doesn't believe me. Well, tell him it doesn't matter whether he believes you or not. You're not paying him for the taxi. If he wants to sue you, fine. But you're not paying him, so that's that. Goodbye. Jimmy, we'll be with you after the break. 
Capture the space age with satellite TV at Centro. Satellite demonstrations daily at Centro, Dixon Road, Blackpool and Ainsworth Street, Blackburn. See how a satellite receiver brings films and programs from the UK, Europe and America direct to your TV, giving you a viewing choice like you've never had before. And Centro give you the license. It's the biggest step forward in home entertainment since TV itself. Evening demonstration 6 till 9 every Thursday at Dixon Road, Blackpool and every Friday at Ainsworth Street, Blackpool. The world of satellite TV is plain to see at Central. These next few moments of peaceful melody are brought to you by International Ford. See, on the quiet, we can give you the best car deal around. Call into International Ford at Garstang Road, Broughton, or phone Preston 862 601, and you'll hear why. Broadbends and Boothroyds of Southport have the look for 86. Sharnos have created for the bride of today beautiful lingerie and new romantic colours, together with a bridal collection of tights and stockings, in soft colours with a choice of very pretty decorative finishes. When you want to look sensational, you can count on Sharnos at Broadbends and Boothroyds of Southport. Ring him if you dare. Alan Benzik, the late night show. Fifteen and a half minutes to midnight. The number is Preston 561000. Out of Jimmy. Hello, Alan. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to talk about arbitration. Go on. Um, I went to the CAB uh, and seen the solicitor there, and he put me on to a solicitor about taking uh, my employer to court. Now, apparently, um, I could not take he could not take the case because uh, it was less than five hundred five hundred pounds that I was uh, suing him for. Now, I don't know the meaning of arbitration. And how to okay. Go well, first of all, he he could have taken the case. The reason he didn't take the case is for your benefit. Uh, if it's less than five hundred pounds, it yes. will go through a thing called the Small Claims Court. Yes. And the Small Claims Court, even if you win your case, are very very unlikely. Tis you know, it's as it's as rare as airs on your brinner's head. It really is very rare for them to award costs mm -hmm. in either direction at the Small Claims Court. So, of yeah. course, if you, even if you won your case, you'd still have to pay your solicitor yourself. Oh, so you'd lose brass. So it would cost me money through... It, it would the... cost you money, because legal aid wouldn't be available for such a little case, or is very unlikely to have been. Uh, All right? So if, if I go through the county courts, it'll cost me 20 or 15 pounds, something like that. That's right. So you're and suing for what, 230? 200? Well, 256 yeah. pounds, actually. Right. So I wasn't far off. But, um, so it'll cost you that money. Now, yeah. what happens when the court receives the papers, it obviously sends them to the other side. Mm -hmm. And if you cannot, if the other side doesn't write back and say, yeah, OK, we agree, here's the money. Yes. What happens then is you go into dispute. Yeah. And both sides are offered arbitration. In other words, you go into a room other than a court and you sit basically on either side of a table with a judge and you try to sort out a settlement without it going into the full court. I see. Okay? okay. Now you both have to agree to do it, but it's rare for anyone to refuse. Yes, okay Alan. All right. Thank you very much I wish you me. luck. How do Paul? Hello, Alan. Um, I'd like to ask you why does everyone say you've got a cheesy willy? I've no idea. Perhaps you'd like to ask those that do, Stefan. Paul. Hello, Stefan. Hi, fans. Orange is Rubble. Can't even hear her. Hello, Eddie. How do you, Alan? I'd like to tell you about this survey that I did today. It was about what men like about women's legs. Well, I don't want to know about your sexist survey. Goodbye. Hello, Dave. Hello, Alan. Yeah. I've got a problem with my tax. I wonder if you give me any advice. I don't know a lot about tax. No, well, what it is, is... In September, end of September, I came back from London and I put in a tax claim for £107. And what happened was they said that they had no trace of it whatsoever. You know, give me P45 in. They said they've got no trace of it whatsoever. And then on Monday, last Monday this week, we got a letter back from Edinburgh, the tax office, and they said 
there's a claim from the office I put it into, I hadn't reached them, and they wanted to know if I could contact them telling that if I had any proof that I'd given the claim in. And if I haven't got any proof, do you think there's any way I can get any tax back? The answer is, the tax people, despite their <laughs> unsavoury occupation of having to take money off people for what ostensibly seems to be nothing, they are not crooks. The tax people, if they owe you money, will pay it to you. Unfortunately, they operate what can only be described as probably the most laborious system in the Western world, so it will be difficult. There are all sorts of administrative cock-ups all over the place. But you will get your tax rebate one day. I say that with my hand on my heart because I too am owed a tax rebate of about the same amount of money and I've been waiting now for two years for it. But I'm not pressing as urgently as you might be. Well, don't, don't I think that at the moment my finances are, really don't exist because I'm a student and I don't get a grant and I have no income coming in and because they owe this money I owe it in rent then I suggest, Dave, that what you do is you go to your nearest Inland Revenue Enquiries office and actually make your case known there and then and ask them to do whatever they can on the spot. There are lots of things they can do there and then if yeah, you go along and see them. But the problem, I've, been, I've been into that. I've been, through, been to the DHSS and all that. And all they say is that when I first give me claiming, I've been, I go, when I first give me claiming, every week I kept going in and asking at the same office, and it was a different person each time. And they said, all they did was took a memo with the national insurance number, name, address, and all that. And then they just sent the a memo, you know, they said, oh, well, we can... Well, who are we talking about now, the Inland Revenue or the DHSS? We're talking about the tax, you know, the tax office. The Inland Revenue? Yeah. Right. Then what I suggest you do is, you presumably know your reference number. Yeah. You do. Then write to the office at which your tax records were last held. Mm -hmm. You know, the problem that I've just got a letter back from those people, the yes. tax office where I was the sorting code was going through when I was working. Yes. And they said, the letter said, that they've had a, le they've had a letter from the tax office who I'm now dealing with. Yes. And they've said that they've got no reference of the memo which, the tax office which I've been dealing with now have meant to have sent, although this tax office will keep going into every week. Right. You know, well, there's a solution to that, uh, to bypass the system. Simply tell your new tax office yeah. of your claim. Which I've, no, I've got to try and sort this out a bit better. The tax office, if I'm allowed to name this tax office. It doesn't matter, go on. Well, the tax office is Southport. Yes. And I've been going into them every week saying I was working down in London. I've given all the, the firm's name and address and saying how much I was paid and because I'm a student and all the tax. Yes. And they said, right, well, we, all we can do is send off to the tax office in London, which is Middlesex, who is sorting out the tax code. Yes. Um, we'll get in touch with them and it's got nothing to do with us because you were paying tax to those people or the tax was going through that office. And so we'll see to them and if they no, got any reference of it, they'll get in touch with you. And then this week, that tax, that tax office in London, in Middlesex, has got in touch with me saying that they have no record of this. They've got no record of the claim from Southport, which have got me P45 form. And have I got any proof that Southport have sent it off to them? Well, I've been to Southport and said, I need proof that you've sent my P45 right. off. Right. Well, and what did they say? They said, well... Because, unless you can name the person who was dealing with you, which, through possibly my own fault, I can't, but because I thought it just, they just me there, send it off and they'd say it was Southport. Tax. Right, I would ask to speak to a supervisor, to be perfectly honest, go back to Southport, ask to speak to a supervisor, find out where your P45 is, well, and I'd ask that supervisor. Because I've been advised by a person who has, well, so they make me believe, has dealt with the tax office. Well, Dave, if you believe their advice, you need not have rung me. No, no, hang on, excuse me. Someone who doesn't work in tax system, but they said to mention it to your MP, and as soon as you mention the name MP, that you'll get some action from the tax office. It's not a bad idea. Well... But still ask to speak to a supervisor. All right? Yeah, OK. Hi. Cheers. Hi. I'll do, Neil. Good morrow, noble Bevic, thy cream-faced loon. I've got this theory that one day, three beings will rule the world. You, Scousers, 
and cheesy win it. <laughs> I'll do, Joanne. Shut up. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'd like to talk about the royal family life. Don't laugh. Go away. You're not even funny. Buy a new or used Torah between now and March the 31st from Dave Barron Caravans and you could win a flight on Concorde. There are two pairs of tickets to be won. Buying a new or used Torah automatically qualifies you for free entry. Get the best deal on a Torah and make sure you're in with a chance of winning a flight on Concorde. Only at Dave Barron Caravans, Chapel Lane, Copple near Chorley. For caravanning today, you get the number one choice at Dave Barron. This Saturday and Sunday from 2pm to 6pm, Blackpool Pleasure Beach, the biggest amusement park in Europe, proudly presents... <laughs> Half price rights! Guild Home Video presents Chuck Norris in Missing in Action 2, The Beginning. An end to America's involvement in Vietnam cannot come before we have achieved the fullest possible accounting of those missing in action. I have repeatedly told you that there is no escape from my camp. Look, our country has forgotten about us, and we have to do anything we can to survive. Good luck, kid. Missing in Action 2, Certificate 18. Order now from your local video library. Hello, Peter. All right, Alan. I bought a shirt the other day from a shop, um, and it was... I had to try it on first, and they did. And they, I said, I said that's a great fit, that. I'll buy it. And I said, could I take that one? They said, oh, no, they got to give you one in, the, in a, like, polythene package. So they gave it to me, plus a receipt. I got it home, and it was completely wrong, the wrong size. Well, it was the right size, but it wouldn't fit me. I took it back for a money refund or a shirt refund, and they wouldn't give me anything back. Plus, I took the receipt. What can I do about it? Well, you can sue them, but, J Peter, why did you let them give you a different one if you were happy with the one you had? Well, I'd take size 40, and it's... Well, it doesn't matter 40. what size. If it says 329, it doesn't matter. You tried one on, it fit. Why not take that one? They wouldn't let me. They, they, said, it, they said it's against the rules or something. Well, it sounds absolutely stupid rule to me. They're going to sell that shirt that you've had on to somebody else now. Yeah, it's a very well-known clothes firm, though. Well, it's still a very stupid rule, well-known or otherwise. Sue them. Sue them. Simple as that. Sue them for your full cash refund. Cheers, Alan. Don't wear the shirt. How do, John? If I was publicly named and insulted, what legal grounds would I have against the person that insulted me? It rather depends on whether the insult could be proven to be defamatory or libelous or anything else. Why? Well, I'm just wondering. Well, can you well, give that's me the answer? answer? Well, if I was to say now, so-and-so, so-and-so, you are so-and-so, so-and-so. Yes. What? Grounds of that person I was insulting have against me? Very few against you, but quite a lot against this radio station. Oh. So I better not do it then? Well, it, no one will hear it if you do. No. <laughs> oh, All right. Then. Goodbye. All right, thanks. I'll do Martin. Uh, hello, I'd uh, like to talk about food reactions. Uh, you told me the other week that uh, eating fresh, I think it was pineapple, nearly killed you, yeah? You remember? Yeah. And when we were talking about ease, yeah, so he said that nearly killed you, and then you mentioned semolina. So, why do you still eat semolina if it makes you sick? I don't still eat it. But you said to me, every time I eat semolina, it makes me sick. It did when I was a kid, and I was told to eat it by my teachers, and sometimes by my mum. And it still made me sick. But since I've had a choice, I don't eat it. So, you've gr you've, so you wouldn't actually eat semolina even if you'd grown out of it now? I never did like it, so I'm unlikely to choose to eat it. But if it was put before me in a place, then I may well eat it, or try to eat it, uh, just as an experiment to discover whether it still has the same reaction. And I doubt that it would. But I wouldn't eat it by choice. I don't like the taste of it. I don't like the texture of it. And it's also... Is, has that got any additives in, semolina? I have no idea. Why don't you buy some and look? I'm sure the yeah. tin stuff may do. I don't like the... things with additives in, well, so I don't want to buy it. Well, in that case, don't buy it. Mm. All right. Take them. Mm, fine. Bye. Never been so riveted in my life. Hello, Richard. Hello, oh, Alan. Um, I like to challenge you on your use of cretin. Pardon? I like to challenge you on your use of cretin. Challenge me? 
Yes, because you've called people cretins when they say something, something stupid. But cretin is a person who has a lack in thigh rocket. We've had this conversation a thousand times on this programme, right, Richard? You either haven't heard it or haven't understood it, but I'm not prepared to go into it again. If you don't like me using the word cretin, then don't listen, because I shall continue to do so. Goodbye. Hello, Beryl. Uh, hello, Harlan. Uh, I'd, uh, I'd just like to talk about this trading on a Sunday. Go on. My, my opinion, I don't agree on it. Why? Because, uh, well, I mean, say, these shopkeepers, they do work six days a week, and they work pretty hard. And Sunday, really, is a day of rest. What is your opinion? Someone that works on a Sunday is probably the wrong person to ask, Beryl. Oh, I see. You know, because... Uh, I work on a Sunday. Pardon? I work on a Sunday. Do you drink milk on a Sunday? Do I? Pardon? Do you drink milk on a Sunday? Do I drink milk on a Sunday? Yes. Er, uh, not very often, no. Does that mean yes? Not very often, no always means yes. Well, er, uh, uh, You never yes. use milk on a Sunday? Never? Never, then. Never have done? Extraordinary woman. Do you use it on a Saturday? I... I do. Why do you not use it on a Sunday? I... I don't know. I just don't, um, bother on a Sunday. I see. Do you have the light on on a Sunday? No. Never have the light on on a Sunday? No. Grope about in the dark, ten o'clock Sunday night, you're sitting oh, there no. in the dark. I'm talking about daytime. I'm not talking about... Well, no, about ain't got, not many people put the lights on in the daytime, no, uh, Beryl. Uh, there seems little point. The, su the, the sun seems quite bright enough for me, really. However, uh, at the time when the sun isn't immediately visible in the sky, do you, on Sundays, put the lights on? If it's dull, yes. Well, as I said, ten o'clock at night, it, it often is dull. In well, fact, dark. It's, yeah, well, yeah. dark. Dark was the word I was dark. seeking, Beryl, but I didn't yeah. want to push you farther than you wanted to go. Um, when it's dark on a Sunday, do you put the light on? Yes. Well, don't do it in future, because some poor son has to make that electricity. <laughs> so don't put the light on anymore. Now then, let me ask you another question. Um, do you use water on a Sunday, even if it's not dark? Water, yes. Water, you know, a little yes. cross on, on top of a bit of metal. You turn it round and, and this stuff comes out into the bath or a cup. Or, it's called water. Um, you use that on a Sunday? Oh, yes. Well, what do you think they do? Send it all on a Saturday? So you're prepared to use the services on a Sunday? So am I. I want to use shops. Goodbye. It's midnight. Midnight News, this is Alan King. Four Britons have returned home after nearly three weeks as captives of right-wing guerrillas fighting the government in Angola. They flew into London's Gatwick Airport earlier for an emotional reunion with relatives. The four were among a large group of foreigners kidnapped when the guerrillas attacked a diamond mining town. They were finally released after a 200-mile force march across country into neighbouring Zaire. One of them, John Sutherland from Perth in Scotland, says many were close to death when they were finally freed. When you take 200 people through a bush and you take them through torrential rain, you take them through one of the hottest temperatures in Africa, and you take them something like 18 hours a day, it's amazing just how much the body will stand. Another three days of what we were, we were doing at that particular time, that 50% would never have made it. Moscow has condemned the United States nuclear test to be carried out later today in the Nevada desert. The Soviet news agency TASS says it's evidence of Washington's hypocritical statements on disarmament. Last week, Moscow extended its seven-month ban on nuclear testing, provided America carries out no tests of its own. A man who's launching a private prosecution against a vicar accused of sexually assaulting children has welcomed the clergyman's sudden resignation. The Archbishop of York had asked the Humberside vicar twice to quit, but until now he's refused. Conservative MP Geoffrey Dickens was prevented from naming him in the Commons by the Speaker. Charles Oxley, the Merseyside chairman of the Campaign for Law and Order, which is bringing the court case, has welcomed the resignation, saying it's a good move for everyone involved. I think it will make life a lot easier for his bishop and archbishop and also it will be better for the parents uh, whose children have attended that church because uh, they were in a very invidious position uh, had they continued to send the child to the church they may have felt that they were putting the child at risk on the other hand if they had stopped the children going they were in effect judging the man to be guilty 
Meanwhile, new guidelines on child sex abuse are being issued by the government. Social workers, doctors, teachers and police will receive the advice following the latest NSPCC figures which show that reported child abuse has almost doubled in the last year. Tory party chairman Norman Tebbit is insisting the government hasn't made up its mind on the sale of British Leyland. His comments come after reports that the government is giving the American General Motors firm a 49% stake in Land Rover, speculation that's brought warnings of another backbench revolt. And former Defence Secretary Michael Heseltine has been accused by American businessmen of wrapping himself in the Union Jack after he attacked the government for doing nothing to stop US investment in British industry. In a speech to the American Chamber of Commerce in London, Mr. Mr. Heseltine warned that Britain was on a one-way downward path if it sought foreign buyers whenever a company was in difficulty. He denied being anti-American, but said the Prime Minister had a duty to protect large industries on which thousands of jobs depend. Independent Radio News. Hello, I'm Graham Earnshaw from Earnshaw Sweet Centres. We are keen to maintain our volume sales record by offering you the largest selection of three-piece sweets in the area. We have the lowest prices. We also offer you £100 party exchange regardless of condition. Free delivery, interest-free credit over ten months with instant delivery from stock. This is a fabulous opportunity for you to buy now and pay later. Visit our showroom, Arndale Centre Morecambe, Stockbeck Mill Kendall, Burrogate Penrith or call and see me at our main warehouse, Vickers Estate, Morecambe. I'm Norman Howarth from the Little Window Company, the specialist in supplying and fitting domestic and commercial security shutters. Domestic shutters will provide excellent security, heat saving and soundproofing for your home, and are just as effective as double glazing, whilst aluminium roller shutters offer ultimate protection against theft and vandalism for shops. Security shutters are relatively inexpensive too, and because we are a small firm with lower overheads, we can pass on further savings to you. Contact us now at Preston Road, Longridge, or phone Longridge 4319. There's fun for everyone Good Friday and Easter Saturday at St George's Shopping Centre Preston. We're open this Good Friday for the first time ever, and we're celebrating with a super kiddies clown on Friday morning. On Easter Saturday, we've exciting fashion shows, and with parking for 450 cars, you can drive to the fun at St George's Centre Preston. Welcome to Saturday. Have a good weekend. It's five minutes past midnight. The number's Preston 56 1000. Now do Gareth. Hello, Alan. I'd like to talk about my alternative to nuclear weapons. Let us hear it, Gareth. Well, I think we should drop you on them, you fucker. Very good, Gareth. You're very, very original. And also very, very silly. Go away. Hello, Joanne. Hello. I'd like to talk about the voting system in the country. Go on. Um, well, take, for example, you've got a population of 2,000 people. Um, and 600, for whatever reason they choose, don't bother to vote. So you've got 1,400 people left. 450, for example, vote for Conservatives, 350 say vote for Labour, and 300 vote for SDP. That makes Conservatives a winner on an overall majority, as far as the three votes could go. But in actual fact, if you add it up, there's 650 people who don't want the party in, and I don't understand it. Well, there are also, of course, your first 600 people who say... They don't vote, so they're saying, we don't mind which party gets in. We're happy with them all. And that's just the clear way it works? Well, that is the way it works. We're debating whether it should or not work that way. And is there, there's absolutely no other way to change the votes round? Well, of course there's another way. And what one, is that? One, one very <laughs> simple way would be for everybody to use the franchise that many people fought hard for the, to win for them and that is to vote. You would then not have your statistic at the top saying 600 people choose not to vote. 
because 600 non-votes are, of course, 600 complacencies, 600 people who don't actually care. So you can add them to any party. Yeah, but could you add them to the winning party? Does well, yes, you can add them to all parties. It doesn't matter. You can split them three ways and add them. It doesn't matter what they're saying is. Now, let's give us your figures again. You've got 600, say, don't vote, right? Yeah, 600 don't vote. Yeah. 450 vote for Conservatives. Yeah. 350 for Labour and yeah. 300 for de SDP. OK. You seem to have lost somebody somewhere. <laughs> they don't well, add up, actually, incidentally. <laughs> who, have I, who have I lost? 600 don't vote. 400 for Labour. Yeah, well, I've, I've, let's say the population's 2,000. So yeah, got we've got 2,000. 400 that don't vote. Yes. You've got 1,400 don't vote. That you do said... vote, and 600 that don't. Yes. Yeah. Well, your 1,400 is Conservative 400, and Labour 50. 350, and Liberal... 300. 300. Well, that doesn't add up. That doesn't add up to 2,000. I know because I haven't included the, two, the 600 that don't even bother. And if you add them up, it, it still doesn't make 2,000. It makes 1,650. Oh, does it? Sorry. Yeah. Well, I got my figures a bit wrong. So it would seem. I was a bit nervous. I wanted to have everything oh, right that you couldn't show well, to me, you see. Unfortunately, your mathematics are, are a little out. But you get the general idea, and I'm I, get, I, get, I get very confused. I get what you're saying. And I'm not And what you're saying is... Fair. Right, well, what you're saying is, in your scenario, in actual fact, we'll change the figures slightly, and we'll make it balance, and we'll say Go that... On, then. Um, <laughs> Let's have a look. I'm not very good at maths, I keep telling no, you. No, neither am I. <laughs> we'll add 300 and that. We'll say 950 don't vote. That'll make it balanced, right? All right, then. I think. 950 don't vote. 400 vote for Conservative. 350 vote for Labour. 300 vote for Liberal, right? Yeah. Well, that means that of those that chose to vote, 650 clearly do not want a Conservative government. Yeah. But, of course, they would get one, mm -hmm. because 400 people do. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yeah. But it also means that 400 people do want a Conservative vote, do want a Conservative government. The other 950 don't give a toss, so they don't mind what vote they get. Now, the solution would be for either the parties of opposition to combine together and defeat the Conservative. But, of course, if you did that, you would then have 300 Liberal people being controlled in some way by 350 people that don't want them. Yeah. So what you've got to say is who won, who came first, and give it to them. The other alternative is proportional representation. Now, if you take proportional representation to its, its ultimate degree, then in your scenario, a, a political system that had, from a vote of 2,020 MPs, yes, mm -hmm. would have four Conservative MPs, let us say, because we can't have half an MP, four Labour MPs, and three, we'll call them Liberal MPs. Yeah. It would then require to have ten, or nine to make it balance, nine MPs who nobody voted for. Because you'd still have that 950 people who said, we don't want any of them. Mm. Got a problem, haven't you? Yeah. Right. Slightly. At the end of the day, you can only have an elected government, whatever system you use, be it first past the fo post, be it a, a form of PR, you can only have a government that is elected by the majority that choose to use their franchise. Yeah. You can't start to include those that do not. Yeah. I would actually like to see an extra line on every ballot paper that said, I do not want any of them. I think they're all crap. Definitely. And then you can go along and, and say, Conservative, not worth a light. Labour, not worth a light. Liberal, not worth a light. And if ever the not worth a light party, that's what we'll call them, if the ones that don't want any of them actually attain the majority, then we have the election again. And yeah. we keep having it. Yeah, until, until somebody it becomes to an equal fair vote. Or somebody wins. Yeah, um, it's a bit... Yeah, it's very... It's a very complicated and controversial issue, John. Yeah, um, what, what was I just going to say then? I don't know, but after the next general election... Here's Bezik making one of his wrong predictions. Go after on, the then. next general election, whatever power gets in, there will be 
a bill brought during the course of that next government introducing a form of proportional representation. How's that? Yeah, it's a good idea. It will happen. The reason it'll happen is because there will be no overall ruler in the next government, and so they will have to have a coalition. And the SDP Liberal Alliance will not give their support to a coalition unless it agrees to have PR, proportional representation. Well, I also feel very strongly that there's a lot of people sat at home thinking, oh, well, just take, for example, SDP Liberal Alliance. I mean, not many people go on about them. It's generally Labour and Conservative. I feel they sit at home and think, well, why do I go and vote SDP? Nobody else is going to, so they won't get in. And it's a bit like we all sit at home moaning about the budget, yet if we all got together and ganged up and said, look, we are not standing for this, then they'd have to do something about it, the same as your vote. Well, not at the moment they wouldn't, but at the next election they would certainly have to take and that into would, consideration. Do you, do you agree with that? At the next election they would have to take it into consideration, yes. Right. All right, Joanne? Yeah, that's Thank great. You, Carl. Thank you, Carl. Thank you. Go Bye. practice your sums. Bye. How do, Alice? Alice Sturr, my apologies. Hello, Alan. Yeah. Liverpool has scousers, but Blackpool has donkeys. Do you know why? Yes, because Blackpool got first choice. We've heard them all before, Alistair. Hello, Gary. All right, Al. Well? Why does my dog eat meat? I've no idea, nor do I care. I don't even know your dog. It's the place to come where shopping can be fun. The Newmarket Water Waterloo Road in Blackpool has a number of markets dotted along it, but two of them stand out from the rest, the New Market and M2 Market. They're both packed with top quality bargains to give you peace of mind when shopping. The New Market and M2 Market are also convenient because they're directly opposite each other on Waterloo Road, Blackpool. Don't settle for anything else and don't be fooled by imitations. The New Market and M2 Market are the original and still the best. It's the place to come where shopping can be fun. Carpets. Red ones, green ones, yellow and blue. We've got the carpets just for you. At the Carpet Supermarket, Fletcher Road off Ribbleton Lane, Preston. Open seven days a week. Take your scrap to CSM. Preston's top scrap metal men. They pay a better price, so this is our advice. Go to CSM. Turn your scrap metal into cash. Best prices, six days a week at Carlton Street Metals off File Road, Preston. Phone seven two double nine four nine. Go to CSM. CSM. Your car, van, motorbike, caravan or boat. If it's got to go, then it's got to go in... Northwest Automart. And it'll go... Fast. Mr. Parr, selling Toyota, day advertised, said, very impressed with response, good value for money. Ooh. You're still in time to advertise, only £12, including free photo. That's a bargain. Taken at home or place of work, anytime, any day. For fast results, phone Warrington 33,000 or your local agent. Northwest Automart, Warrington 33,000. At your local news agent from Thursday. Now do Cheryl. Hello, Alan. Um, I'd like to talk about uh, when you sign a contract with a company, um, you know, when you sort of uh, join a company and you have to sign a contract. I'm, I'm talking about in the selling uh, market now, you know, sales traveller. Yeah. Um, well, I've sort of left a company and um, I did sign well, a Cheryl, at the risk of asking a stupid question, yeah. have you left or have you not? Uh, yes, sort I've of. Left Right, well, yes, sort sir. of seems to imply that you might have done and might not have done. You have left. Yes, I have. Go on. Right. Um, and I signed a contract with the previous company when I started with them. Uh, it's a sort of that you won't re-travel. Now, since I've left and I've started work for a new company... Um, Are you saying that when you started, you signed a contract saying you would not, after you left the company, set up and work for a rival company within their catchment area selling right. a similar product? Yes, that's Go right. On. But uh, some of the customers that I uh, have dealt with at the previous firm, I knew from a previous firm before that who I introduced to the previous firm. Yes. So I've known a lot of these people for years. So what you want to know, Cheryl, is can they uphold the clause in the contract that says you cannot take their customers? Yes, if they... The answer is yes, they can. Pardon? The answer is yes, they can, if yes. they can establish that you have taken those customers. Yes. Their customers, of course, have the right to go elsewhere. Yes, yes, that's 
right. So if, um, I, I've just found out sort of recently that they have been going round to people and asking them, uh, have they seen me? And if somebody or they didn't, just didn't want to tell them, uh, they would say, it's no good denying it, we know you have. And I know for a fact that they've tried to get people, they've written things down and people have, some of them have been a little bit nervous and have not known, you know, sort of where they stood and um, they've made them believe that uh, they're entitled to know whether they're dealing with me or not. Mm -hmm. um, and they've got them to sign uh, things and then, the, you know, some of these customers have said that they've, they've had to say to them, I didn't say that, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to sign that. Um, so um, what, what I'd like to know really is, is um, all, these, all the people that I've ever dealt with have signed for me to say that they, I did not approach them in any way, that they, they approached me, that they chose... But of course the issue is, are you working for a rival company? Well, I'm working for another company, yeah. No, I didn't say another company. Oh. I said a rival company. A rival company. Are you selling the same commodity? Yes. Yes, I am. Right. Do yes. you, you might find that you've burnt your fingers. Yes. But if, if they want... To you signed a contract saying that you would not take their business yes. to a rival. You yes. have done. But if other people... It doesn't matter. You have done. No, but if other people approach you, is that still wrong? Gerald, you signed a contract saying you wouldn't go and work for another company. I'm not sure if it actually said that. Well, uh, well Cheryl, that was what you said it said. If you're oh. now telling me it didn't say that, then the rules are all different. No, if you don't no. know what you sign, then you must be a piggin' idiot. <laughs> don't you read what you sign? Yes, I do. Well, don't you remember what it... Don't you keep copies? Yes, but uh, I'm not... Then read the damn thing, woman, cos I can't guess. No, I know. Right. Well, get your contract, read it, but and then ask a lawyer. Don't bother me again. <coughs> Stupid woman. Hello, Samantha. Corbin, white and ages. I'm sorry? It seems you have nothing to say, Samantha. You have nothing to say. Never mind, we'll talk to Alan instead. Alan? I yes? I want to talk about the Beverly Hillbillies, if it's okay, Al. <laughs> if you must. Well, I, I, I can't go back on the night, but you said there were someone called Jed Alan. Is that right? Mm. And I was wrong. Jed Clampett. But yeah. I was on about Jethro, you see. Yeah, but no, well, someone called Jed, and you said, there's no Jed in that, and you put four down with Yes, well, put it on down on you now. I've just told you what I meant. How do Ashley? Hello, Ashley. Hello, Alan. Yes. Hello, right. Can you hear me? Yes. That's great. I'm up in Cumbria, that's why. All right. What do you want, Ashley? Right. Are you coming to Wolverston sometime? Have you decided? I haven't decided for sure yet, but it looks like I am. Well, if I sent you a letter, uh, would you be interested in coming and having a free meal in one of the best eating houses in Cumbria? I very rarely take up such offers, but if you want to send me a letter, I shall examine it. You would? Mm -hmm. That'd be great, because it's just along the road from the Coronation Hall where you were today. Is it, Big Well, I couldn't find it today when I was looking for a coffee, but never mind. Tell Absolutely. me one thing, Ashley. Yes. Why has Ulverston Market not got an ice cream stall in it? Because it's cold. Never mind because it's cold. This is no excuse. When I go to market, I expect to be able to buy a cornet. <laughs>